Morning Bright fans, this is Tim from Boatshed Brighton. Uh, the next in our little series of what to look at when your boat's out of the water. So this is a westerly Kumar 32 and she's been pulled out after a significant period in the water. So she's uh, she needs work doing, but so uh, we're going to concentrate on the rudder for this little episode. And as you can see, we've got a nice long rudder there, looks good and strong, and we're looking for any dents, cracks, deformation, impact, etc, etc, and it does look pretty good. Now, a good thing to do is to give it a wiggle to make sure it's nice and free. Now, this boat is fairly stiff, but that's not a problem, really. Uh, she will free it with, um, with use, hopefully, and it's also a good, a good thing to give the wood a wiggle transversely or thwart ships or left and right, pulling it towards towards you and pushing it away at the bottom just to see if there's any play in the bearing here um, and there's a little bit of play on this one that's to be expected but we don't need we don't want it to be too tight otherwise it would be hard to steer um, so really the other the other thing with this is we've got a bit of uh, osmosis on this rudder too which means that salt water has penetrated the outer layer got into the construction of the rudder and is pushing the top layer to, towards us um, through a condition called osmosis and you can tell if a, a rudder's got osmosis by these kind of bumps if you can see them so what's happened if I just use the, uh, the ship's hull to help me explain um, underneath the gel coat of the rudder we've got the actual construction of the rudder will look something like this. The top layer will look like a nice white shiny coat and then on top of the top layer we'll have layers of anti-foul looking something like the rest of the boat here and the anti-foul is what we can see here. Now where the surveyor has used a special tool to scrape away the anti-foul to, to investigate the, um, the blisters you can see that we've got raised sections here. Now if we scraped away these here they would look the same as these two here and basically what's happened is the top layer or the, the white shiny nice looking layer of the rudder has been pushed up into um, a pimple from the inside by water that's soaked in caused a pressure build up within the construction of the rudder itself and pushed it up. Now it's not um, desirable uh, many people would walk away from this sort of thing but, but many other people will just uh, live with it because it's not terminal. It'll take years and years to affect the um, st structure and the strength of the rudder, but other people would have it done. And basically it's uh, take the rudder off, dry it out, um, sand it down and um, put more gel coat on and more anti-foul again. Um, why does this happen? It can happen because of the, uh, the method of construction the type of GRP used, how the rudder was actually put together, but also where um, rudders tend to be made of two halves that are then clamped together and uh, stuck together. Quite often water does leak into rudders because they're usually hollow and basically fills a rudder with water and it, uh, it just pushes itself out through the layers. So that's uh, why it's fairly, uh, in my experience, you see it more on rudders than you do on hulls themselves. Okay, so I hope you've uh, understood a little bit more there about um, looking at rudders when your boat's out the water, just to give you an idea of uh, the basic things you need to be looking at. Hope you've enjoyed and enjoy the rest of your day.